So welcome back to Monday Night Live with Lance. We have a special sports and community club edition, and I'm very humbled, as I am always, uh, to have a special guest with us, but I am incredibly to introduce you to Daniel Nolan, who is a Hall of Fame local footballer, uh, current uh, Wallen Football Club coach, um, and also a, a teacher and leader at uh, Colby College um, out in Greenvale Lakes there. So welcome, Daniel. Yeah, thanks, Lance. Thanks for the introduction, and yeah, glad to be part of the program. Are we going with the nickname Nugget, or we get, we'll stick with Daniel tonight? Uh, mate, you can call me whatever you like, mate. <laughs> but uh, obviously, you're, you're um, I've known you for a long time now. Obviously, through the, the power of sport and, and the connection that sport is, and um, been known for a while. And well, our, your first memories of actually first connection with the uh, Love Me Love You Foundation was coming uh, uh, supplying the, the Gatorade um, and all the supplies for us on our first walk from Sydney to Melbourne back in 2014 and, and made a special guest appearance on the last day uh, on your way to a game, I, I believe. Yeah, that's right. It was um, remote probably at the back of Craigie Brand there. You were walking um, on the side yep. of the highway, Lance, and you were just finishing up. And, yeah, a lot of respect for, for that achievement to go and walk all the way from Sydney to Melbourne to raise awareness for what is a very good cause. But, uh, yeah, right. I... I'll, I'll claim that the hydration technician got you through that and um, I supplied you with all the electrolytes to get you through, mate. Got but me uh, through and, all the, and, the, and the messages of support along the way, mate. And obviously every walk and ride and everything that we've done, um, you've been a big helper for us with that. So we appreciate that, that support yeah, no, that goes through that. And uh, also, obviously, the, the fact of, of being out to the Wallen Footy Club um, a couple of times to... Well, it was an enemy of my mind in my playing days, <laughs> my last year of playing footy, but obviously the community out at Wallen Footy Club and how that's been impacted um, during these current current times. Yeah, it has, unfortunately. I mean, we're no different to any other sporting club, I guess, but, um, you know, COVID has really impacted the small community of Wallen, but um, I guess one thing that I'm really proud of being the senior coach there is that, um, you know, we're very close and we're working together um, with the players and all members, um, you know, we're trying to stay in contact with our sponsors. But this has impacted everyone. And, um, yeah, it is really unfortunate. Um, yeah. The players, first up, um, you know, it's impacted them mentally and physically. And, you know, we don't, haven't really got any answers just yet of when we can get back to training. Um, yeah. But, you know, you think about these boys that, uh, you know, work during the week and for some of them, might have a bad day at work or at uni and be stressed out and it can be that outlet to come to footy training and um, I guess to have that taken away um, and to not look forward to playing like footy on that kind of Saturday Arvo, um, you know, is impacting people in different ways. So as a coach, we just have to, you know, try to support them through this. It's not, so, and it's not just the players, you know, we talk, we talk about the, the clubs are run by volunteers and the amount of, amount of effort and resource that goes into running a, the smallest of clubs um, or the biggest of clubs uh, and the impact that that's had on the volunteers. Yeah, I mean, um, even the coaches foremost, I mean, I mentioned on it before, we're, we're working really hard to try to um, stay connected, but the coaches have gone through, you know, planning these training sessions uh, for a long time and then to get – um, you know, notifications maybe the day of or the night before the training has to get cancelled again. Um, yeah. You know, coaches are trying to reach out to their players, whether it be the under-19s um, or our reserves players, because some of these players have lost their jobs. Um, yeah. Some almost lost interest in the sport, which um, is unfortunate, and we really hope that we get them back. Um, so the coaches are working really hard, and the volunteers, which are the backbone of really any com any committee or any local sport, um, you know, the committee have been working really hard and, you know, to deal with so many barriers along the way, Lance, um, you know, I was, I was blown away when, um, you know, you find out about the protocols and how to get back to training. Um, you know, for, for a committee to work behind the scenes with their own job, uh, with their own family issues and um, maybe they know members who have lost their jobs as well, um, you know, and they're um, putting protocols and um, letters in place to from the local government and then from, I guess, Footy Victoria. Um, yeah. Then you have to put permits into the local council and your league. Um, so they're putting all this extra stress on our volunteers, which, has, as you know from local sport, if you don't have volunteers, 
and you don't have a club. Yeah. There's interesting times when you talk about, uh, as a player, you, you, and I was guilty of it as well, as a player it, during that time, you, you take a little bit for granted that the mm. clubs just ran, you know, and how it works. And But the, uh, when you step away from footy or you get a bit more older or experienced in your years of being belonging to a club, that you, you appreciate a lot more around the effort that it goes into putting a club together, you know, whether it be a footy club, netball club, bus, whatever cl- kind of club you're involved with. And the effort and resource because you said these people are you know working their full-time jobs and you know family yeah. members and doing those which is uh, you know a, a job in itself and then actually trying to sort of run a football club and make sure that the players have nothing else to worry about apart from playing that's right and um going forward it's probably going to put even more pressure on volunteers because um, even though this year's out and it's been wiped Think about yeah. game day next year. You know, round one, you're hosting a home game. Um, you know, this, this this virus isn't, you know, going to go away overnight. So the protocols that they're going to have to put in place with hygiene, with player safety, um, you know, you think about pre-game in the rooms to afterwards, yeah. social rooms, all these measures are still going to be put in place beyond, you know, the next six months for sure. Yeah. What do, what do you see sport doing? What, what is, what's the landscape look like moving forward? Um, well, it's totally different, isn't it, Lance? I mean, yeah. it's, and I mean, we're talking a little bit about football here, but it's all it's all community sport. I mean, as a teacher, I see that um, you know it's in fact it's impacted local basketball, local local cricket almost. That um, is coming up in the summertime, but that's going to have a huge impact. Um, yeah. But sponsors are huge. I mean, sponsors aren't just to pay players and to pay coaches. Sponsors bring fees down. So sponsors yeah. allow, um, you know, your reserves players to to play the game with reduced fees. So registration costs or apparel, all these type of things aren't at a premium level. So that's going to have a big impact if local sponsors, um, if, if their income isn't coming in on a regular basis, then, um, you know, it's really going to have that impact long term on local sport. Yeah. And you talk about that. You talk about we always think about the sports in terms of the senior players that are playing, and they might get paid in terms of footy. And footy is probably one of the only um, sports that, in terms of community level, that they get a get a good whack of money. You know, so but it's about those reserves. But you're talking about those those lower other leagues and other sports where there is no money involved. So that is their outlet to get to you know training on a Tuesday and Thursday night, wherever it might be, and then the game day. It is that social connection part that they're really involved in the club for and in being a part of something that's, you know, they're belonging to and belonging a part of. And you know, that social disconnection is, you know, that's that's the biggest hit, I think, in terms of the impact that it's going to have on a lot of people. Yeah, that's right. And the social connection with, as you mentioned, functions and, um, you know, being connected almost um, filters down to junior sport as well, Lance. I mean, we're talking about senior football here in reserves, but, um, you know, like I, I think about my son who started Auskick last year, Jack, he's six, and absolutely loved it. And, you know, he's had a whole winter now without Auskick and um, socialising with his friends. And then you think about, um, you know, if you have a son or a daughter that plays under 12s basketball, uh, you know, they're, they're getting a whole winter now or who knows how long this will go for of not playing. So what are they doing, Lance, if, they're not, if these teenagers aren't playing sport, uh, there's increased time on social media on, you know, yeah. PlayStation, um, okay. yeah. I, I playing games. And, um, you know, as a, as a PE teacher at secondary school, you know, we always talk and um, educate the students about the importance of hydration, nutrition. But, I mean, let's face it, the, um, you know, the step count is really low now for students, yep. um, especially during the lockdown period, especially for, I guess, year seven to ten students who aren't back yet. Uh, if they're mm. remote learning and they're just in their room, um, no sport, uh, you know, social media, as, as mentioned, and that's that's a worry. I mean, we look at obesity levels increasing every year. Um, so that's something that we have to look at as a society going forward and especially what you do and what we do as educators. So obviously we, we talk about the this great word pivot in the, in, the, in this world at the moment and, and pivoting through, like us as an organisation, we've had to pivot our way of going about things and doing in, in programming and we'll, we'll talk a bit a little bit later about um, the online lifetime of wellbeing program that, that's available uh, free of charge to sports clubs, sports and community club members and it, um, 
you know, the, the, the pivoting of our self, self-awareness and self-care is important because, as you said, it's, it, people place so much emphasis on that physical activity, which we all should be a part of, whether it's a small amount or whether it's be highly involved in a sports club. What are, what are we seeing that you know, could be something that out of the left box? How are, we, how are we pivoting with our self-care, do you think, as a, as a sports club? Well, in the in the short term, it's to stay engaged with the with the players, isn't it? And um, you know, for the next six weeks, we have to be better at finding ways that we can reach out to them. Um, you know, it's social media platforms. I mean, we're we're trying to do player profiles uh, where our community can find out more about each player that they may not have known previous. Uh, we yeah. we try to celebrate birthdays as well, and this may sound like a small thing, Lance, but I mean, all these things add up to engagement, you know. Like, so um, put out birthdays every, you know, couple of days. We really celebrate them. And then you see the comments. People are putting positive messages on there for someone's yeah. birthday or having a little laugh. Um, yeah. You know, it's having little competitions or trick shots, you know, which our netball coach was fantastic, was finding ways netballers and footballers could do little trick shots and having prizes oh, yeah. at, at, at the end of it. Um, so, yeah, there's just – different ways we could do programs that they can still do at home um so to make sure that they're staying fit and active um because they need to use their imagination to to get the blood pressure up you know to find ways to increase the heart rate yeah the heart rate up and that Uh, as you said the uh, the acknowledgement of birthdays as you know we we took that for granted a little bit it was the uh when your birthday come around it was the 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 idea, let's just go out and party and do your thing. But it's, you know, I think it's stepping back and appreciating what those, um, that, that is in terms of celebrating that and how, how that is celebrated because we need as people to be celebrated. Um, even going through these different challenging circumstances that we're going through, it's, um, it's an interesting time that we talk about. The trick shots, what's your trick shot? Uh, what's my trick shot? Um, <laughs> Was it like kicking six on the... Uh, so for those that don't know, so I, in my last year of playing local footy, I played at Broadford Footy Club um, in the Riddle District and we played against uh, Wallen in a final and uh, Daniel Nugget Nolan uh, brought one out of the bag and kicked six against us in a final um, and apparently telling me that you kicked them all against me even though I was nowhere near you. So is that your <laughs> trick shot you still go on or? Um, look, it's a go-to line every time we have a presentation, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Come to the ice, ice produce, uh, when we have this um, session with the students or at the club, I try to use that as my intro line. It's my, it's my claim to fame, mate. But um, <laughs> I, when I ran back to the middle and tried to give you a bit of a nudge or some leap and um, you gave me strong don't argue, so I went back to the full block and just sat there. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> Kicked another couple of snags, well played. Um, but you had played local footy for a long time. So you mentioned the birthdays and um, I, was, I was watching one of these um, – live sessions that you did and Matthew Pilios was saying that he tries to, um, you know, have that message in his day that when he gets home just to try to put that message out on his social media platforms about birthdays and it might be something small but he tries to have that as his positive message out there to still kind of stay connected with people. Um, yeah. And, you know, some people might reply, some people might just give a like on it or say thanks, mate, but yeah. just knowing that you're there and knowing that you care, it's yeah. Uh, it, it's a small gesture, but I know Matty is a good friend of Love Me, Love You. and um, Yeah, the big man. And I, and I think a big part for us um, is Matty Pilios, what he brings to the table is his sense of community. And I think that's and the big thing we're going to talk about tonight is, is that sense of community yep. and how we acknowledge the people that are in our community. Because you said it's that um, those small gestures, and it might be a little birthday message, and some people think it's a token message. But we talk also about just the checking in message. You know, you said engaging and keeping engaged with the members of your club and your network. You know, it ju- might be just a simple message, it might be a simple text message, it might be a phone call. But it's, I think, a really positive thing that you need to be doing and, and consistently. You know, they're not just throwing it out every, you know, fourth week on a Monday night, but, you know, consistently checking in with the people that you're involved with because you never know, they might be having a, they might be having a crap day. And that simple message that you have sent might just make their day and might bring them up a little bit again so that, you know, they can get that feeling back of love. And, you know, the big thing with that is obviously in the sports club, we've come into a new age where, you know, with footy, 
that the um, the AFLW is, is a big part of the football clubs now, and I think it's been an amazing um, experience, which is, you know, we're forever learning. The clubs are forever learning how to engage that properly. Um, but I think in terms of having the, the, the girls, the female footy involved in a footy club has been really good. Have you found that, Wallen? Yeah, well, the aspect of football and netball club is fantastic, and I see now it's happening more and more. And um, now with AFLW, you're getting football, netball, and women's football in the same club, which is great yeah. for small communities. Uh, and now it's pushing towards the metro leagues as well. Um, yeah. You know, Lance, I remember you did a talk at Wallen a few years back, and we had the whole community in there, and the girls were in there as well, and we had our sponsors. And I guess from that day, um, I, I feel like the stigma about mental health has kind of broken down a little bit of our barriers at our club. Yeah. Um, you know, from from that experience, we've probably had you know two. Or th- it was maybe three years ago now that you came along, three four years ago, but yeah. we had two or three players since that time. Um, you know, openly come out and speak in a in a group setting um, about their emotions, about yeah. how they're not okay, and that it's not a sign of weakness to say that you're not okay. And for for me, that was a really proud moment about, I guess, our culture. But the message that you brought across that people um, can put themselves up in a in a vulnerable space and say, "This is how I'm feeling," and then from that moment, we can branch out and we can give them some support network, we can give them some advice um, and they and now they feel more comfortable being around the club because they know that they've got it off their shoulders a little bit. Um, yeah. was about breaking the stigma but now it is about how, how do we help if we can't see it? So yeah. we're in lockdown, I, I can't get access to my players so they're not going to openly speak up as much, I don't think, if they were yeah. at training, probably well um, in sight, in mind. Yep, I'll just do it. I'll build up the courage. So yeah. that's something we all have to work towards that breaking the stigma down when people are isolated and locked down in community sport. Yeah. How have you tackled that as a footy club? I'll be the leader of your club. Yeah, it's bloody tough. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. And, um, you know, we don't really know the answer. We don't really know whether it's affecting you yet because, um, you know, we can reach out through messages and um, in our leadership groups. Um, you know, with the programs that we're putting out, um, you know, we did a Zoom session early in the piece. Um, yeah. But you just hope that, you know, I mean, you talk about the five the five people that yeah. are strong for you that if you need to speak to. So um, that's the message we speak to our players is to try to reach out, think of five people that um, if you're ever in need of advice or just oh, to say I'm not right. okay, um, they'll, they'll be there for you. Yeah. So I just got a comment from here from uh, Alison. Sorry, sporting clubs yeah. are a microcosm of society. Clearly, as as administrators, we all have the responsibility of creating an environment where it's okay to ask for help without fear of judgment. And I yeah. think that's the biggest thing is that it's creating that environment in your club that whether you're at physically there or or not there, you know, obviously in these times that we're going through, that people feel safe enough to be able to have those conversations. And yeah. if we we do talk about that five people a lot. You know, the support crew is, is what it's about, um, Daniel. It's it's having that connection and they said consistently checking in with those people so that we're normalising the behaviour around not waiting for shit to hit the fan That's before right. I go to say something. So how do we norm, normalising those behaviours and around it? Because, mate, the Australian the Medical Association, they're forecasting a 25% increase in suicides from the fact of what we're going through in these last three to four months and in the next couple of months at least um you know so us as a, as a community and a member of our community or our club we have a role to play to make sure that every individual that's belonged to our club and some clubs have got you know a thousand members you're talking just players wise and it's in the, some of the bigger clubs you know plus the parents plus everyone else is involved so you know you got a two thousand three thousand sort of strong uh, membership base in terms of a, a sports club it's making sure that we all play our role to make sure everyone that's feeling supported. And I think that's a big thing that, um, you know, the, the, the good clubs really do that and they really take that on and make sure that that's um, working for them. And, and some clubs uh, have got a long way to go. But it's for us, it's actually allowing them and giving them a, a platform and, and making sure that they have programs available because you talked about support before. That you know, when you physically can you build up that courage because you've seen that person is acknowledging, going, oh, okay, maybe I should say something, but making sure that we have these programs accessible and the toolkit accessible 
I think that's the biggest thing, making sure that everyone, every individual, no matter who they are and what they're doing, that they have a, uh, an, an accessible toolkit to make sure we're having these conversations. Yeah, that's right. I mean, just looking at our club, there's players that have lost their jobs. You know, there's players yeah. that, uh, you know, not, not going to uni at the moment. There's players who are, um, you know, with young families and not sure what the future is going to hold. So, I mean, we don't know how they will bounce back. We don't know yeah. if we'll be, you know, the same kind of society or the small community that we were. And we're not isolated. I mean, we know that everyone's in the same situation. But yeah. it's um, it's a really tough tough spot that we're in but it's a unique opportunity for community leaders um for people like yourself lance and for coaches to know that you know we're also educators and we're role models in the community that tough times won't last but um you know we need to be there and say that it's okay um ring us if you need it and um leadership groups can play that part as well if they don't feel comfortable speaking to a coach first of all but just to get out and say that it's okay because it's all about breaking down the stigma as you mentioned because uh, yeah. once you break down that barrier, the weight comes off your shoulders, and um, it's okay, especially during this time, because we can't be locked up and isolated and just be in our own bubble and we get worked up. Yeah. I've got a comment from uh, Shay. Uh, sporting clubs are as much an outlet for our children as they are for us adults, most definitely. Um, they use their sport to connect with mates and friends as also release the stress and tension they are carrying. So much more time is being spent further disconnecting, as you said before, on devices and technology, hey, um, etc. But all about balance and overall well-being is obviously the way forward. In the absence of sports, we need to continue to get outdoors and be active and role model for our children. A great message you guys are sharing. Thanks. And that's the thing. It's leading the way as well, you know, because, you know, I never know. I've got to, obviously, Alexander and Lenny at home. You know, every day we try to get out for our 20-minute, half-an-hour bike ride. You know, getting it out to just to disconnect, and you know, they see that they go, oh, they and they look forward to it. So, as as parents and as you said, role models, that's the role we need to play. You, know, you you sort of lead through your actions, not just say, oh, you should go do this, and you go do this because the kids are going to go whatever, mate, and sure. you know, so, and making sure, and obviously yourself, you you keep pretty fit, and you got a couple of young ones as well there. Uh, how how are they impacted at the moment? How are you hoping. Um, you know, Jack was so excited to start school. You know, he started prep this year and, yeah. um, you know, he's gone through term one, met, you know, new friends, new teacher, new school, the whole works, had a great time. Um, yeah. And then on to term two, it just gets all thrown upside down. He spends half it at home, then gets back for a couple of weeks and then we have to break the news to him a few days ago that, um, you know, sorry, Jack, we need to go back to remote learning. But you put a spin on it, you know, I mean, um it's not about, I guess, saying sorry and having it as a negative. We look at it, Jack, well, we're going to be able to do this now. So yeah. we went and purchased two rabbits, Lance. So we've got two new members. <laughs> um, we've you, got, call one so, Lance? you call one Lance or not? No, no, no. They're just small ones, mate. They're miniature ones. So. Oh, not, not big stocky ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got two <laughs> ones. And so that's his project. So he's the, he's the father of the rabbits. Um, so... Yeah. You know, just finding different ways to keep him connected. And, you know, during that time, he you know, had his iPad down and he wasn't playing with his toys. He was really trying to look at, well, when he's going to feed them, when he's going to look after them, all that stuff. So, um, you know, being a teacher, I had my year 12s come back to class today for the first time. And yeah. we spent the first 15 or 20 minutes talking about how how life is different. And they love their sport. This is a you know, like a sport class and they're in there because they want to be there. Um, and... I guess, Lance, put yourself in their shoes back when you were a private school boy uh, <laughs> in your <yourself>. um, <laughs> going, through, going through year 12 where they have to study for their sacks. They have to prepare for assessments. They've got homework. Um, you know, some of them might have a part-time job. And then on top of that, they're taking away all social aspects that are probably their outlet, yeah. right? So, um you know, back in year 12, you know, it's the time where you have a, probably an 18th birthday party every fortnight on a Saturday, you know, where you get yeah. to socialise Well, they're all out the window. Um, yeah. You know, there's no year 12 formal. There's yeah. things like well, the um, graduation ceremony may be completely different to what yeah. has been in the past and to what they deserve as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And no, and no um, school sport at the moment as well. So you're a year 12 student. You're built up to this final year. And then you're going to have 
anxiety. You're going to have questions. It's going to be why me, why us? This has happened. You know, this is the first time a pandemic like this has been 100 years and it has to fall on our year level. So mm. as, as teachers and role models, we have to be there and say, it's okay, we'll get you through it. We're halfway there. Uh, we've got a term and a half to go now. Um, yeah. They walked in that door probably still anxious and not knowing what's what's going to happen. And it's a big one with sport, though, which we've got the connection through sport here. But these kids yeah. haven't got their local sport on a Friday night basketball. They haven't yeah. got their Sunday afternoon football. But then they're told that they need to study and they need to prepare for assessment tasks as well. So it's having um, making sure their mental well-being in the classroom is strong. But also when they leave us and they go and they're locked down, and they're in their room or they're just in their lounge room, that are not just on platforms like the iPad and social media because that will just um, control their mind in different ways. Yeah. You talk about that the, uh, the unknown. You know, as I said, no one knows what's going to go on the next two months, three months, four months, and that, uh, that, that unknown, that very unknown factor is creating a lot of anxiety in, in kids uh, and adults alike. You know? So for that, how are you taking care of yourself? Um, well, the families first. That's a that's yeah. the number one, and uh, you know we keep pretty busy. We try to go on our bike rides. I've got a, a little trailer now on the back of my dad bike, the mountain bike, <laughs> as yeah. much as we can. Um, but you know we're we're back, so I teach VC classes, so we're back into normal normal routine yeah. from from today. Um, yeah. you know, we're trying to reach out to as many people in the community as possible. Um, yeah. That's the best way to do it, and. Uh, look, it's unfortunate, but it also affects the elderly. And, um, you know, my dad is quite sick at the moment. He's um, in a um, nursing home and restricted a- restricted access to him at the moment, which is tough. Um, yeah. So hopefully um, when the nursing home opens up a bit more, I can spend time with him because Lance time flies, doesn't it, mate? And, um, you know, we need to make sure that I want my kids to be able to spend as much time with their grandpa as possible. Um, yeah. So this Affecting a lot of people in different ways, so to make sure that we're all kind of staying connected and strong. Yeah, self care. Apart from the dad bike, mate, you uh, the the body's taken a, a fair uh, smack over the years, uh, sitting in that forward pocket, so you shouldn't have had too many injuries. These days, you you're keeping pretty fit. Yeah, well, we're lucky enough to just have a uh, a new gym at Colby, which is fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah, for for staff and students, so. Um, you know, we're looking to get that more up and running as the restrictions ease, obviously, with the um, COVID safe protocols that we have to go through. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I still enjoy my sport. I play, um, you know, cricket in the summer, I play basketball still on the Wednesday nights when, when we get back up and running. So sport's yeah. very much a part of my life and, um, you know, staying active to um, kind of talk to talk but also walk it so we can show the students the way, the way to live a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, cool. Which leads us into um, a big part of, obviously, be, uh, as a sports club, we were very lucky um, to get a grant from uh, Big Health, uh, big uh, partners and, and supporters of ours, um, to develop our online lifetime of wellbeing program. So it's a program that we would have normally done in-house, uh, schools, yep. clubs, uh, through the workplaces. Um, but what we're here to, uh, as well, to launch tonight is that uh, people are part of uh, sports and community clubs um, the links will come on um, in the comments here. They can access that. It's a four course. It's a four module course. Um, it is totally free to be a part of. We just want people to make sure that um, we're, you know, understanding a little bit about, you know, some self awareness, some tools, and some to, some tools in that toolkit um, that we keep talking about. You know, and it is. It, I'll give you a little spiel. It's the. Uh, the Lifetime Wellbeing Program helps to support participants coping through the development of key knowledge and strategies that can help them to keep balanced, okay, which is pretty crucial at this time we're going through. This will assist not only lowering the impact of potential mental health difficulties that they face in the future, but also to empower them to take control of their mental and emotional health. This is the big thing. You know, it's, it's actually giving people the access to understand it, the very frameworks. We're not here to give answers. These All our programs, we don't give answers to people to say, do this, do this, do this. What we're trying to do is just help you understand a little bit um, more how you can implement or what tools you can implement for your self-care um, and, you know, making sure that it is a more positive mental health journey moving forward. And I think at this current time, I get the, the biggest learning that I've taken from the restrictions and the isolation world that we're living in is that it's been a great idea to 
understand how to slow down, how to slow mm. down and, and, and really invest in those self-care practices. You know, the simple things around gratitude journaling, um, you know, mindfulness practices, breathing practices, you know, understanding nutrition, what's going on into us, you know, getting out those, getting those steps up and, you know, because those things in terms of, you talk about those steps before with the kids. As an adult, you know, I've learned that fact, the, the less I move, the worse I feel, <laughs> you know, in terms of, and people understand that. So, but, you know, putting to sort of um, not playing the victim anymore. We can't because we're all going through this. And I yeah. think so. People to, to access that program, please get a part of it. Um, share it with your sports club, uh, with your community club, and, and you know have as many people as you you can get to it, um, get to that program. So I appreciate that. So, um, mate, uh, as a as a teacher, you know, the, obviously your child's going back. What's the vibe around school? Uh, well, it's different because uh, I mentioned before there's four year levels at school that aren't there in the senior yeah. in the senior campus staff. But the vibe's exciting. I mean, teachers teachers want to be there. Teachers mm -hmm. want to be there for our students because we know what they're going through, especially our VCA students. Um, yeah. So we we have to be their rock. Yeah. Um, so you know, at certain times, we have to be there and say it's okay, and yeah. we're going to get you through that. One thing I tell my Year Twelves is to um, have a whiteboard in their bedroom and to always put their assessment tasks or to things up on what they have to do that week to put it up there yeah. and then to actually, once they finish that task, to put a line through it. Don't rub it out. Just put a line yeah. through it so they can see that they've achieved something in yeah. that week. So there's a list of five things. Yeah, pass the maths test, done. Leave it there and have it there for the weekend so they can see, well, I've achieved these things during the week. Yeah. Um, and then down the bottom, what I've asked them to do for this week it's just when they wake up, have one positive word that they put down the bottom of their whiteboard. So yeah. completely irrelevant to their sacks or to what they have to do for homework, just put one word there that they're going to focus on. And then the next day they put a line through it and they start with their next word. But I think a whiteboard and having it very visual to the students, especially the senior ones, about positivity and remaining focused um, is great because a lot of students can plan with their laptops, which is the way society is going, and I and I get that. Um, yeah. You know, on a day, probably diaries and writing things down. They put mm. sticky notes on their on their yeah. desktop. Work that way. Um, but you know, I tell them you can buy these whiteboards for ten dollars at the reject shop. And yeah. in terms of what you can get out of, of it every day with these powerful messages and a to do list with the lines, that would be my advice. Not just for students, I guess. Um, for for anyone on their day-to-day -day lives, no matter what job they do or what setting they're in, have that yep. wipe there and have a to-do list and make sure that you're putting a line to it, not rubbing yep. it out so you can actually see success. Yeah, and that's the thing. You said with, with technology, with, with some kids have uh, forgotten how to write, you know. It's, but they, they talk about with, with journaling, and you know, I learned this a while ago around journaling and, and writing down those positive, positive affirmations and stuff like that. That actually writing them with pen and paper, uh, actually you feel it a lot more. Okay, you actually feel the words, you actually feel what you're saying a lot more. So it actually has a lot more positive impact as opposed to yeah. predictive yeah. text over a, over a phone on your phone or on your computer. So it's um, you know, to put those into play. And as you said, it's the simple practice. Like it, the simple practice that we should all be able to do because, you know, the the whole excuse of I don't have time. <laughs> you have plenty of time at the moment. You know, there's. Yeah. The, the, the badge of honour of being busy, um, it's gone. You know, we're, we're not filling up our time with sitting in traffic or sitting, those sorts of things that are wasting time. Obviously, we had to do it to get to the locations, but you've got time now. And if it's important to you and you and you feel the benefits, you know, keep doing it and making it work. And if it's working for you, share it. Because we talked about before about the, 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 uh, the power of storytelling and sharing these positive affirmations and sharing these positive experiences and, and making sure that, you know, we're all in this together. And as a community, we need to vibe together because mm -hmm. we're not alone. And we keep saying, you know, we're never alone. No one travels their journey alone. That, you know, sh share those achievements. You know, celebrate little successes because, you know, you talked about the birthday thing before, you talked about the trick shots, whatever it is. C celebrate all these successes because, you know, we, we can't let this, um, we can't let these challenging times take over. And, and you know, obviously a lot of people are going through some real, Devastating experiences, you know, with, with job losses and a whole range of things. And, and but we've got to do this together because if we we all don't act and make sure that we we overcome this sooner rather than later. This could go on forever, <laughs> pretty much. 
you know so as i said celebrate those successes it's, it's an amazing appreciation so as i said before the the links in the com in the uh, comments there and you'll get another post so please access that program it's um it's very powerful it's as i said it's it's the uh it's what we do at love me love you all the time you know i present this this program you know last year i think i presented close to 250 times and and majority of it with this program so um it, it has its powerful it has a very powerful impact and you'll get way out of it what you want to get out of it as well okay as i said so like any course that you do or any part of uh, any programming that you do any training any physical whatever it is you'll get out of it what you want to get out of it and it's um but it's just giving yourself the opportunity to be a part of it i think so it's um we talked about uh, merida says here i know a lot of friends with kids they are homeschooling they are very grateful and a lot more aware of what teachers do nuggets <laughs> have you how many times have you heard that one <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> uh, look it's different you know yeah. the remote learning is different and um it's tough there's no doubt about that it's it's uh, unique and you haven't got that same connectiveness and as a teacher that's what you build all your lessons on that's how you get your motivation every every day when you walk through those doors of the classroom because you get that face-to-face -face connection and you can build a rapport with students and when you're doing it through a zoom it's tough yeah. um, so teachers are now finding different ways to engage 24 little heads on the screen at once uh, <laughs> they're all concentrating but yeah. they're all getting as much out of their education experience through remote learning as possible um, yeah. So, yeah, for the primary school teachers, you know, the, the amount of work that I know that they're doing at the moment to make sure that no student is falling through the cracks. And that's what we have to do as, as educators. And I guess parents should know that, um, you know, we are doing everything around the clock to ensure that um, every child that goes to school, whether it's through the gates and VCE or whether it's through a laptop or an iPad, um, know that we're doing what, what we can to ensure that education is the front and foremost. Yeah. So uh, Meredith says here, is it open to anyone or aimed at groups? It is a sports club and community club release at the moment. Um, anyone can do it. It's, it is open to anybody. Um, but we're just making sure that uh, people get involved with it. So Meredith, uh, enroll and work away. So uh, well, awesome. On, so we just log in and put our details in there and get access to it. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes, mate. So the link's through there and just follow the prompts, um, yeah. enrol the course. The, if you do it properly, it should take, you know, you do it over time. You don't just do it all in one hit. It should probably, probably take a couple of hours over over a sort of a, a few-week period. You should do it. Okay. So it's um, it, it is a very powerful and it is, it's just a, um, it just gives a good positive framework to help on some self-awareness and some self-care um, to make yeah. sure, and, you know, obviously, and going forward with that, obviously, we've got a whole range of other um, programs that will be released um, in the coming weeks as well with our Welfare Warrior training, which is, uh, you know, helping people with, like, mental health first aid, uh, but a more accessible uh, version of that, um, and empowering caregivers, um, which is uh, being developed at the moment. Um, as I said, helping teachers and coaches and managers and leaders of, of sports clubs and community clubs, parents, aunties, uncles, you know, just looking at... Uh, risk versus protective factors and how we make sure we're instilling some um, some positive boundaries and understandings and frameworks for, for our relationships with kids and how we look out for them. So, um, but please get involved. Mate, Nuggets, oh yeah, I'm not going to bring up the fact that you kicked six goals, luckily against me again, but I just did. Um, mate, we, uh, we always, I could talk to you forever because you could talk forever as well. Um, but we, we finished off some questions, mate. It's... Um, what would you tell your 15 year old self get to the gym me? get to the gym don't worry about um my aerobic capacity as much and maybe just start doing some more bench presses maybe that's <laughs> what I'd say. so then i wouldn't have to wear long sleeves for my whole career lance there you go <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice um what does mateship mean to you uh, well, mateship and family are really everything, aren't they, Lance? Yeah. And, um, you know, we have to be there for our friends and be there for our family. And I guess, I mean, you spoke about what you, what you would tell your 15-year-old self. Well, back then you'd say that um, 
you know, you'd love to be able to be more open with your friends about your feelings, wouldn't you? And I know that would be extremely tough as someone going through adolescence to be able to talk about their feelings. And you only realise when you get older yeah. about how important it is. But yeah. to be able to say to your friends that, you know, if you weren't feeling quite right when you're in year 10, um, you know, to break down that stigma when you're in year 10 about mental yeah. well, mental illness or mental well-being, we should say, um, yeah. would it help our schools out so much, Lance, if we could break the stigma a little bit more in teenagers? Yeah. So, so yeah, to be able to break and that's a big one, you know. It's we keep saying, and the work that we do is you know, create conversations, make sure that people have feel safe enough. But you got to think back to you know when you were 16, 17 years of age, you wouldn't have even thought about it. You know, this is for, for for me. It's a long time ago to be that age, but you wouldn't have even thought about it. And, and as it is said, it's a very um, it's the biggest barrier I think a, a teenager faces right now because there's still the fear of actually saying something, saying, oh, I feel like this. But you wouldn't, you know, those conversations would usually go to uh, to an adult maybe, and not so much to, uh, especially in the male world that we live in. Um, you know, how do, we, how do we combat that? How do, how do we make sure that these 16, 17-year-olds are saying, hey, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not good here. I need some help. That's right. And how is what we're doing right now. That's yeah. how that we continue to have conversations. Um, yeah. but you know that this isn't going to happen, you know, what what you're doing isn't going to finish in a year's time. You know, yeah. it's going to be a conversation that um, hopefully we leave a legacy to our kids, Lance, that when yeah. they're our age, they can yeah. continue to break the stigma down and the conversations continue to happen because, um, you know, it's not going anywhere quickly, but we just have to keep breaking down the stigma one by one. One by one, making it work. What would you tell you leading into that? What would you tell your friend or mate that was battling a mental health challenge? Um, I would tell them that I'm here to listen. Yeah. yeah. So um, I would Simple. say I'm not going to worry about giving you advice all the time or telling you that you need to do this. Just I'm here to listen. So ring me, talk about whatever you want, talk how long you want to talk for on the phone, I don't care. Yeah. I'm here to listen because, as you know, Lance, sometimes people just want to talk and get it off their chest, don't they? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. people don't want the answers. Sometimes people don't want others to tell them, okay, yeah. this is what you're doing there. You know, they're just yeah. there to go, no, 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 don't tell me, just just listen to me. Just, just listen. Just listen. Yeah. Hear me out. So that's one. That's the thing I would say is I'm – I'm just here to listen. So just you talk, and I'll, even though I love to talk, but you know, just. Yeah, you love to talk. So <laughs> you might find it hard to listen. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's the thing. You said it, it, the art of conversation sometimes doesn't have to be both ways. And it's that capacity to just to hear what's being said. Because we know that when vent, when getting those stuff off your chest, it, yes. it starts to make sense to you a lot more. When you can hear, when you hear your voice externally, not when you hear your own voice internally. When you start talking to yourself inside, it, it becomes all muddled and it becomes quite confusing. It creates a, another level of stress. But when you hear it out loud, you think, "Oh, okay, all right." But then it's that that capacity of the both people in, in that conversation to be able to process that information, mm-hmm. and and how do we process that? And I think you said it's about I'm here for you. No matter how much you want to talk, or no matter how much, how little you want to talk, but what do you want to do with that information once you've said it? And that's the thing. As, as we move forward, it's going okay, okay. This you presented this to me. All right. What would you like to do with it? Because same thing. It's putting it that uh, talking about putting that ownership back onto the person. That they're going okay. I've heard myself and I've uh, understood myself. I'm processing myself, and they're going to go. Oh, I want to get better, or I want to do this. Or, I would like to do this. You go, okay, all right, well, let's do this. And yeah. you said, we do it together. Well, um, so now what do you want to do with this? What what yeah. would you like me to help you with this rather than, yeah, giving them the answers? Have, that open, have the open question back to them. Okay, so how can we fix this? I'm, I'm here for you. I'm listening. How, how can we fix it and travel this journey together? Yeah, most definitely. Together. The big thing, mate, strength in numbers. 
Um, what tools, apart from being on your dad bike, mate, where, where Jack's actually riding and you're in the little trailer behind him, um, what tools activities do you implement to help keep you balanced? Um, what tools? Well, buy two rabbits. That's <laughs> um, no, just to, to, to find a positive through this. I mean, you, you mentioned it at the very start, Lance, that there's nothing we can do about this. We're, we're in this lockdown for six weeks. Yep. So we can feel down and miserable and no local footy, no local sport, you know, can't go watch the AFL, can't go see my friends, can't go to the pub, can't go to a restaurant. But then, but what can we do? Yeah. And that's what I think needs to be the motivational factor here. But, okay, we could write a list of 100 things we can't do. Let's write yep. a list of three things that we can do and focus on those three things for the week. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that, you know, it's um, – Jack's been nagging me to build this Lego set and, like, I'm horrible with instructions with kids in kids. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got patience for instructions, right? So that's yeah. one thing I need to be better at, looking at instructions and working with him to build this Lego set, you know. Yeah. And um, if we don't build it correctly, does it really matter? No, it doesn't. But it's that one-on-one time with him and yeah. Jack thinking, hey, Dad's here sitting down with me, the TV's yeah. off and we're building Lego because the yeah. weather's – the weather's horrible at the moment. You can't do anything. You can't do anything outside. You can't go to a stadium. You can't go to an indoor play centre. No. What can you do with the kids? But I think, yeah, just three things a week. Don't worry about what you can't do. Let's focus on what you can do inside the four walls of your house. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing we're doing at our house at the moment is uh, not the Lego. We're building marble racetracks. Uh, Alexander's uh, going right into his marbles between Beyblades and Bakugons and all those sorts of things. We, yeah. Um, building marble racetracks, which, you know, the same thing. It brings back the memories because I remember sitting at, uh, especially in primary school years, sitting at recess, lunchtime, you'd set up your little stall in the in the, in the the yard, you had your little competitions and you had, like, the Tom Bowlers and the whole thing and you thought you were the yeah. king. and The tiger uh, eye? The tiger eyes. The tiger, the tiger eyes. <laughs> eyes. So, so, all the ball bearings and all that, yeah. Yeah, um, went through it. So, it's, um, and show Jack. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, but it's good. As you said, just to sit down and do some simple things and appreciate what, uh, what time we've got. You know, as I said, the, the forced opportunity, it is, I call it a forced opportunity because, you know, usually it would have been too, you know, not too busy, but you would have been in having to the workplace and doing things and being at training or, uh, you know, a couple of nights a week and do those sorts of things. But being at home, I, I, I love the opportunity and I'm very grateful as, as you are to have a, an amazing wife and a mother to the to the kids. It's doing amazing things, you know, and setting the, the tone of, you know, doing their activities and learnings and the whole things they're going through with it and making sure the household's still rocking and looking after, um, you know, the big melon over here. I'm loving the opportunity of just spending time and you keep talking about. And... You know, to, I'll, I'm just going to get a um, photo up, Lance, to show you something that I sent you today. It's about time and the next six yep. weeks. You know, let's not go, well, we want these six weeks to end because it's six weeks of our life that we're not going to get back. And yep. so many people in our society are time poor. Yeah. You know, that would love an extra six weeks of life or, you know, to be involved. And, um, you know, I think about my dad when I think about him being time poor. And I don't know if this is going to work, this photo, but can you Tell see this? Right. Yeah. Yep. yep. Time you give, time is poor. Yep. Yep. So, so time, time is, is precious. Don't waste it. Yep. So Here's I've got it. now, so that photo is now on my desk at school. Yeah. And I look at that and I think of my dad. Yeah. Time is poor. And I think of my kids. Yeah. Um, it's so much time to give, you know, yeah. and how much time are we giving them? Yeah. Um, and I'm in the middle, I'm, you know, my dad and my kids and, but time is so precious and that's why I was thinking about, well, these six weeks can't be we want it over because um, time will run out sooner or later. Yeah, yeah. No, that's important. As you said, it's, uh, and, and don't waste time with your petty little stuff. Mm. You know, we've, got to make, we've got to make it work together, as you said. You can play this victim in these next six weeks or we can do something about it and make sure that we, we get through it. So. And uh, just got a couple more comments, mate. Great work, LMNY. Our youth and members have responded so well to your programs. This is from uh, our amazing partners and supporters at the Life Saving Victoria. 
who uh, you know talk about uh, not being able to do what you do. Um, obviously, their their work is that's finished now at the moment. Um, great chat, guys. Um, well, my mum always said a problem shared is a problem halved. There you go. Okay, it's a little, uh, little bit of, a little bit of a uh, bomb, a gold bomb there. Yeah, um, Welcome, absolute winner, guys. Communicating, listening, and being non-judgmental. I think that's a big one. Okay, no, as you said, we're all going through a range of uh, experiences at the moment, and everyone's dealing with it differently. Mm. But I think being non-judgmental in, in your capacity with that that listening um, is crucial because people are pretty quick to pass judgment. You know, and, and the more the more we pass judgment with um things that we that we're dealing with and the conversations that we're being a part of, those people might not have those conversations again. Yeah, you know, so if we can if we can go without judgment, it'd be amazing. Um, focus on what we can control, what brings us joy. How can we connect with others? Well, exactly. So, and everyone's as I said, everyone's going to have an amazing amount of different learnings, and you'll take out of this next six weeks, and you'll take out of the last four months what you want to have to take out of it. But I think as a, as, a, as a community and a society, we have a, we all have our role to play to make sure that we are connecting. Just because we're isolated doesn't mean we're not connected. Um, I think that's what we need to help people understand. And you know, and this too shall pass. Yeah, this is, this is pretty crucial. So, mate, uh, last one to do, and it's a bit of, we'll see, how the, we'll see where this goes, but uh, what do you wish for? That's that's um that's a very open question, isn't it, Lance? Ooh, um, very open. Let's see where you go with this. Um. <laughs> well, family health. Yeah. I think it's pretty simple, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and everything else follows. Yeah. Yep. Most definitely. Yeah. We're all rolling. We're all rolling that, and yeah, and I do um pass our thoughts out to those people that don't have. Um, such strong family connections but you know as I said um, family is not just blood you know family is our crew is our connection is our community so um, you know please make sure we're looking out for each other and um, you know, as I said we'll get through this and we'll make it work um, Nuggets uh, the rest of the year obviously you've got school going on hopefully a footy comes back uh, to some sort of normality uh, going into next year um, obviously, with all those other people involved in the sports clubs, but make sure that family time and you know, that beautiful family of yours is kicking goals, mate. And um, good luck with the Lego. If you, uh, the, the instructions are there for a perp. They've got a purpose. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to spend that much money on a big pirate ship and it comes out looking like a garbage truck. But uh, make sure, yeah, you, uh, you follow the instructions, mate. Um, but please, as I said, people, it's. Uh, have a look at the uh, online course, the Lifetime of Wellbeing. Um, stay stay tuned for more programs that will come from um, Love Me, Love You because, you know, we love uh, – I love nothing more than actually going to a um, – and, and I say this every time I go into a sports club. I love nothing more than going into a sports club and, and getting, you know, and talking in front of the people and, and connecting the conversations to them. And, you know, that just goes to the same at schools and when we do it at the workplaces. It's, um, you know, and in time, that'll, that'll keep happening. But – to make it more accessible with our programming um, and what we do with the resources, um, you know, uh, online and the digital world um, is here to stay. So be, please get involved with all that. So Nugget, mate, you're an absolute jet. Appreciate everything that you do uh, and obviously the support that you give to myself and Love Me, Love You, um, you know, from day dot, mate, without even having to be asked. So uh, much appreciated and, um, and good luck with it all. Thank you, Lance. Pleasure to be on. You're a superstar. Cheers, mate.